I think there's going to be a full moon tonight. I'm not sure, but it might be one of these super moons. The media is always coming up with these terms like science. Oh, the scientists know what's going on. The moon's bigger and brighter than usual. What? <laughs> I thought you said it was in a stationary orbit. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow's going to be the blood moon. It's going to be red. Oh, these are because of the particles from the fires. Are you sure? Does the moon change colors? I don't know. Indians always like to talk about those many moons since blah blah blah. Like many times the moon went through its phases. You know, I've got a lot of mileage on the Buju Nana Buju podcast talking about my grandparents. You know, they were real Indians. They went to boarding school. And I can tell a little comments they made, you know, memories I have of my Indian grandparents. And probably the most mileage I've gotten is from the song I wrote, Home, about the story of my grandfather running away from boarding school. It's a great story. Because it tells the story and the experience of the kids who went to the residential boarding schools. You know, from first-hand account, I knew people who went there. But there's also a subtext or whatever where people get to hear how, uh, you know, I had this relationship with my grandparents who would tell me the stories of the good old days, of the days, you know, I'm, I'm always starting stories with back in the days of the grandfathers. I'll tell stories of World War II and when my grandparents were young. What I don't mention very often is how little, especially my grandfather, actually spoke to me. Yeah, I grew up with him in a way. He lived upstairs of me when I was a kid. I have this one beautiful little story of the first Ojibwe word I ever learned. Mukade, Mushkiki, Wabu. And I still remember the morning I learned it. And I've told the story and I drew a comic strip about it. And I've sung songs about it. It's all about me at six coming upstairs. We lived in the basement and I had a bunk bed. In the morning, I could hear my grandfather's steps above my head. Early in the morning. And I'd go up there and he'd make me coffee with milk and sugar. And I still remember him saying to me, you know how, what they call that in Indian, don't you? And I said, no. I didn't know any Indian. Because that's Makere Mashkiki Wabu. It's black medicine water. It's like, what? Because, yeah, that's what we called it in Indian. He didn't even call it a jibble, he just called it Indian. Makade mush kiki wabu. I remember practicing it and checking in with him later. But I also f remember feeling kind of like, whatever, he wasn't that interested in teaching me. So that was the first Ojibwe word my grandfather ever taught me. You want to hear the last Ojibwe word my grandfather ever taught me? Mukade, Mushkiki, Wabu. That only happened one time. I didn't sit at my grandfather's knee and as he told me stories of the old days. Everything I know about his boarding school experience, I fit into three verses of a three minute song. He didn't tell me his, the names of his friends. He didn't, he never told me how he felt. Everything about his boarding school experience. I heard once one story, one time he told the story. 
He never referred to it, even though I would often ask questions. Discussion would always get kind of shut down. He didn't want to talk about it. And then my grandmother, who went to the same boarding school 10 years later, she always wanted to kind of, uh, what's, what's the term? She said boarding school was great, that she loved it. She'd be like, I don't care what you say. I thought boarding school was great. And she'd tell, she wouldn't tell stories. She'd make comments, you know. We played basketball. I had this really great teacher. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. So when I got out of boarding school, I went to college and I, I became a teacher. I was kind of justifying boarding school. And what's the word I'm looking for? It's not poo-pooing, but delegitimizing, whatever. Anybody who had, you know, would say something critical of the boarding schools. But also she didn't want to talk about it. She didn't want to, she just wanted to state the record. Hey, I liked boarding school. So yeah, I know you say that every time I start talking about the effects that had on our family and intergenerational trauma and everything I'm learning outside of my own family about boarding schools. So it's weird. But I wasn't lying to anybody, except myself, kind of. You know, you ever have that where your memories are sort of, you choose what memories to remember to fit this kind of story you have in your head about the kind of relationship you had with your elders. The kind of relationship you wish you had. You know, I loved my grandpa. I really looked up to him. I really thought he was cool. I thought he was funny. I he was handsome, but he was a mystery to me. I once kind of justified his lack of involvement in my life, his lack of interest in me as a person. Um, I read this article, they're comparing Indian parenting to non-Indian parenting. They said non-Indian parenting is child-centered. The parents get down on the floor and play with the kids. The parents will put on the birthday hat and sing and act like a kid. And the things are all about the kid. But an Indian parent is adult centered. They will bring the children with them on their adult activities. You know, we'll take them fishing and whatever. And I remember going, yeah, that, that was my grandpa. He would take me out to the dump. I remember because I have another memory. It was a cute story when I called him dumb because he said, I'm going to the dump. If you want to come, he went on his truck and he took off. He didn't wait for me to get my boots on. And I was mad. And my parents asked me what was wrong. And I said, I don't like the dumb old grumps. And everyone laughed. But I was hurt because he didn't care. And we did go to the dump a couple of times because he needed to go out there and I just tagged along, no seat belt, and he wouldn't talk to me. He'd sing, and you know what song he always sang? It was an old country song. I wanna go. How's it go? I wanna go home. I wanna go home. Oh, how I wanna go home. So years later, I would write a song about him running away from boarding school. And I use those same lyrics. Because that was the very little I had with him, really. You know, my grandfather was a fisherman and a hunter. And he lived out in the woods a lot. And, you know, I've never gone fishing. There was never one time in my entire childhood or one of these Indian adults who went out fishing daily ever said, Michael, why don't you get in the boat? I'm going to take you fishing. You know, a lot of people defend bad Indian parenting. They go, oh, the boarding school generation, they didn't have parents. 
So they didn't learn how to be good parents. Come on. It's common sense that if you never take a kid fishing, I mean, what do you hate that kid? Or are you just so self-involved, so selfish, so only think about yourself? I think if you asked him, he would have said he loved his grandchildren. Everyone knew he loved his grandchildren, especially me. But not enough to take me fishing. Not enough to ask me about my life. Not enough to leave me anything. I mean, I wasn't looking for money or a will or anything. But no, no comments. No thank yous. No. So, my memories of my grandparents are kind of bittersweet. The stuff I can glean, you know. I mean, there were many miles walked, but we walked together, but not really together. I walked right behind them as they were just on their own path. Now they're gone. And I honor their memories and their everything, you know. And I give them credit for so much. But anyway, here's my song I wrote for my grandparents about boarding school. And it's called Home. And I hope you like it. Miigwechka bizendawieg. Thank you for listening.
I remember it still. I saw a whippoorwill out on my window sill. How could I sit still? So I got right up and I walked right out. The teacher said to me, Where do you think you're going? Boy, I said I'm going home. I want to go home. I want to go home. Me Okay, hey, Buju! Buju! Welcome to Buju Nana Buju. I am Nana Buju. And I am Natasha! <laughs> <laughs> and we'd like to invite you to join the what Buju Crew Membership Channel. For $4.99 monthly, you get exclusive perks, I've got exclusive no members only live stream. <laughs> Auntie Tasha's moment of wisdom, huh, sweetie? That's right. And after today, <laughs> uh, candid behind the scenes discussions with creator Mike the Lions. And uh, new music videos, dead celebrity interviews from heaven, what have you. <laughs> and of course, cat videos of Bagheera. <laughs> Click the link below. Join the Buju Crew membership channel. $4.99 a month. We'll see you there. <laughs> and I will see you again. Kiga Wabba Min. Mino Wa. 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 So it goes, or so they say. Times like a mountain skate. I don't know, but I can't complain. Baby, God knows I've got my own <laughs>